Well, greetings, friends, and blessings to you on tonight. We praise God for this opportunity to come your way once again with the program Spotlight on Music, sponsored by the Fellowship of Music and Arts. And tonight, we're going to have a blessed special time. Our guest is ready, and we thank God for the privilege to share with you tonight. Listen, as we prepare for this interview, I want you to do one favor for us, like and share, tag your friends, start your own watch parties, invite folk to join the conversation tonight. Uh, one of Detroit's own, the sweetheart of Detroit in the person of Marla Larkin is going to be our guest. And I uh, want you to get ready as we prepare to introduce uh, again, thumbs up, hearts, get in the comment section. Let us know you're breathing. Let us know you're there. Whatever device you're on, wherever you are, you can grab us and join in with us and be a part of the conversation tonight. And uh, listen, you will be glad that you did. Again, we're on all of our outlets, Fellowship of Music and Arts, Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA, uh, Andre S. Woods, all of everywhere. We're on all four of my pages, Bishop Andre S. Woods, Andre Sonny Woods, and of course, we're here on the, uh, the Fellowship of Music and Arts. Listen, I want to share some information as we get ready to uh, speak to our guest tonight in the person of Marla D. Larkin. Uh, Marla Larkin, let's start with uh, just some excerpts from her, her bio, uh, an employee for many years at Blue Cross Blue Shield right here in the city of Detroit. Uh, and she was manager of community responsibility and administrated uh, corporation contributions process, managed corporate communications with uh, internal and external share stakers, share stakeholders rather, managed and coordinated projects and activity for employee and executive volunteer programs and uh, corporate sponsored events. Manager, Board of Relations, April 1994 uh, to April uh, 2014, managed activities of department, including staff development, communications, and support uh, to 35 board member of directors, managed professional, exempt and non-exempt employees, named world greatest manager by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, one of five recipients. What an honor, recognized through the board uh, a resolution for 20 years of exemplary service to the board of directors and affiliates. 
other positions held during her 34 year career at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, regulatory analyst, procedural uh, documentation analyst, technical writer, uh, education includes Wayne State University of Detroit, Michigan, Master of Arts Communication Studies, May 2020-2009, that's what that is. I need to put my glasses on, Mark. Uh, Bachelor's of Arts, Mass Communication and Journalism, December 1989. Uh, adjunct uh, Professor, Wayne State University, uh, Detroit, Michigan, Basic Communications, Public Speaking, Communications 1010, fall of 2009 to March of 2011. And in her Christian ministry, accepted Christ as a personal savior at the age of eight, early Christian teaching at the Spring Hill, the one and only Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Detroit, Michigan, under the leadership of the late Reverend Dr. James Emmett Moss. I remember Pastor Moss, a member of Spring Hill for over 30 years, Molly, you ain't but 30 years old. Uh, <laughs> choir director, uh, role began under the tutelage of mentor, the late Dorothy Grant, Dr. Dorothy Grant. Uh, she came to the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church in the city of Detroit, pastored by the Reverend Dr. Tillis J. Chapman, joined on the Christian experience, March, 1999, member for over 22 years. Boy, I tell you, leadership opportunities include teaching the students six through nine years of age, Galilee Hour Power Sunday School, choir director to the children, to women's and combined choirs of Galilee, member of a social media ministry, virtual worship production team, uh, lead on uh, optics and editor of, for communications, tutor with the tutorial ministries, state or oratorical coordinator for the Baptist Missionary and Education State Convention of Michigan, where the Reverend Dr. Wallace Mills is the president, conduct public speaking workshops for graduating high school students and scholarship opportunities at the National Baptist Convention Oratorical Contest held yearly. Christian Education Diploma received in January, January the 3rd, uh, 2017 from the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education, Dr. Jerry Young, the president, member of the National uh, Convention of Gospel Choirs and Courses Incorporated for 32 years, served as national supervisor of the Soloist Bureau and board member uh, for 15 years received Lifetime Achievement Award, August 6, 2015, uh, for commitment and service and dedication to the Solo Bureau. Uh, featured soloists on uh, NCGCC Incorporated Conventions, uh, uh, the 70th anniversary CD, Singing Peace in the Valley, toured Italy in December uh, 2021, and uh, I'm sorry, 20, 2001. All right, I got that right now, 2001. And with the ensemble of the National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Courses Incorporated and was featured soloist in Vincenza, Vincenza Italy with the Santa Maramo it, Italian or Italy Orchestra. I, I won't say these words now. Uh, debuted first CD in service, in his service in 2005 and featured soloist and director on Galilee Baptist, uh, Baptist Church's first CD, Never Alone in 2011. Serves and facilitates workshops for choirs and choral directing, song leader uh, of the, for the National Baptist Convention Incorporated Pastors and Ministers Division after having served five years with the music team for the late night services of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated in 2017, received continuing education credits and certification uh, from the New York Theological Seminary 
are for completion of minister of music for worship, foundation of music courses, which included biblical, cultural, theological, liturgical, uh, missionological, mission logical, there you go, and technical areas of study. Oh, these tongue twisters here. Authored her first book in 2019 entitled The Diary of a Committed Choir Member, Personal Attributes, a Mother of Two Children, Shauna Denise and Leroy Larkin, Grandmother of Five, Christine, Javon, Royal, uh, all right, Lilana, Lilana and Sila, <laughs> okay, <laughs> was married 37 years to the late Reverend uh, Leroy uh, Larkin. Okay, we got that out, my God. Well, thank you, Lord. Listen, uh, <laughs> let's welcome to this platform my sister, uh, Marla Larkin. So glad to have you. Oh, glad to be here, Bishop. <laughs> Listen, and I and I know I know that this was only a drop in the bucket. She let me tell y'all something. She edited this real good to make it light on me. But I'm telling you, thank God for all you have done oh, and for all that you're doing and going to do. It's such a joy to have you on in person, and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Listen, they're jumping in the comment section. Aww. Bishop, Bishop Clinton Lee, all the way from Texas, April Thomas, Brittany Daniels, and our sister Carla Show. They oh, all wow. they're jumping in the comment section. What a blessing! What a blessing! Yeah. Now, listen, Marla. I know that kind of skimmed the surface, but I want you to take us back uh, to, to, to your Spring Hill days, oh, growing up in church and how you uh, got interested in singing and in music. What, what was it that influenced you? And, wow. uh, and when you came to, uh, uh, to know that you had a gift and uh, how all of that came about, who shaped wow. you, who men mentor you and all of that. Just take us back and give us your story of your journey in your own words. Oh my goodness, Bishop, let me say first, I am so thankful and honored that I'm a part of your platform. I mean, you are doing a wonderful, wonderful work. And just to hear from others, you know, like the Detroit Zone trumpet, trumpelettes. I mean, my goodness, to hear yeah. from Denard McClary, to hear from these people that we have an opportunity to, to work with. It's a blessing for you to have this platform. And I thank you that I am on the list. Okay, I'm on the list. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, native Detroiter, like you said, uh, born and raised here in the D and attended the Detroit Public Schools, you know, Cass Tech, hey, Cass Tech, uh, uh, Durfee Middle School. And that's where they had the, during the, the curriculums when they were really musically inclined, the Klee Clubs and the uh, gospel choirs. And I got an opportunity to, to kind of work with that. Um, Dorothy Grant, 30 years at Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church was really my mentor, directing and, and singing. And she was always the one to say, Marla, come on, you can do this. I wanted to do it, I really did. But you know how you shake in your boots and you're young and you just don't wanna make too many mistakes. She saw that I could do it. And it was through our annual concerts that we had at Spring Hill Baptist Church under uh, Dr. James Emmett Moss, the one and only James Emmett Moss as our pastor. And he kind of opened up the door for Dr. Grant to do whatever she felt was appropriate for choir ministry. And those annual concerts would have all the musicians to come in, uh, George Fowler, uh, Daryl Houston, I mean, just those that were ultimately helping her to groom us, to groom the young people. So we had an opportunity then to direct some of the choirs. I started under uh, Rosa Grant, who was over the young people, the children's choir. She was the clerk of the church. She was the church secretary and our first director. 
fellowship core choir. And then we went to, you, you, you aged out of the children's choir, we went to the inspirational choir. And that was under Dr. Moss for, uh, Dr. Grant for a while. And then my sister-in-law, Teresa Larkin, took over the directorship of the Fellowship Choral Choir and the Inspirational Choir, which was the Young Adult Choir. So at each of those steps, I was able to, to sing, to not really know what I was singing or how it was happening, but it was coming out. So <laughs> Dr. Grant, over the gospel course, and you know that was one of the, the the most wonderful choirs in the city of Detroit, Dr. Grant and the gospel course. We would do our annual concerts, and that's where she would have me to come and direct. So she was the the impetus for my musical start in in uh, Spring Hill Baptist Church. We were over on Delmar and Kniff for years and years and years, and with the uh, urban renewal. We had built a beautiful edifice, a beautiful church. They had to tear it down because the freeways and urban renewal was coming. So that took us from the north end over to the west side of Detroit. And that's where a lot of our, our real ministry, the singing and the directing really happened over at that Spring Hill Baptist Church. Greenfield at Vassar. I know you remember that, Bishop. You got to remember that. Oh yeah. oh yeah. And my mother again was very committed to getting us to church, getting us to rehearsal. And now in her her wonder years, she's 91 years old, I find myself thinking back on those days. Cause now we were in the same choir. You know, I had grown where the gospel course had our mothers and our dads in the same choir, which was just kind of ironic. It really was. But after Spring Hill, still through Dr. Grant, we were able to go to conventions and be part of other uh, ministries. And the National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Courses, that's, that was our introduction through the Fine Arts Fellowship Union of the convention. And that, again, was formulated by Dr. Grant. So you can just say, Dr. Grant is in here. She was in here. She was everywhere for me. She was our, my main, really my main tutor. And one thing she always taught, you need to know if you're going to be a soloist, what key you sing in. So many times we'll just have to start for the musician and just not prepared in that way. But she said, if you don't learn anything else, Sister Larkin, know what key you sing in. And I think that's insp that inspired me to at 100 years old, to go take music lessons, piano lessons. <laughs> Both of my kids, no music. They, they grew up in the church as we have, but we spent our time giving them the lessons. And now I'm 100. I'm taking piano <laughs> lessons, okay? <laughs> because that's always the way to hone the skill and to, to be better at what God has chosen you to do. But Dr. Grant, National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Courses, and you can't leave out Dr. Tellis Chapman because my husband and I joined that church March, 1999. You know, life happens, things happen at your home church. You think you're gonna be there forever and ever. Nah, things change. Life happens, stuff happens. And it leads you in another direction. And it's, it's providence. I heard my pastor say it's providence. And led us over to the east side to the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church and Pastor Chapman, I never will forget that day that my husband walked down that aisle and said he wanted to join. And of course I followed. I sang a song prior to Pastor's uh, sermon that day. I need thee every hour. And that just, just, took, just took us in a whole nother area, just took me in a whole nother spot. And that day we joined Galilee Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Tellus Chapman. Been there over 22 years. So just by the grace of God, we are where we are today. The, the ministry opens up with opportunities that others give you. And the National Baptist Convention, the National Baptist Congress, the late night services, 
have an opportunity to sing on those services. And Bishop, you were a part of that too. You know, you were part of that music team that uh, sang at the late night services, those midnight <laughs> midnight musicals. You were used to that. I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was a blessing for us to be a part of that. And now uh, serving in the pastors and ministers division of the uh, mm -hmm. National Baptist Convention. And it just opens the door. The Lord does that for you, but it's the people that he put in your way yeah. to make these things happen. So all glory to God, all glory. Yeah, now you you talked about Dorothy Grant. I, how, oh. how well do I remember her when whenever uh, Frank White, Charles Nix was getting ready for either it was the National Congress or yes. getting ready to go to the convention. I'm going back to the Mary O. Ross days. Oh my goodness. When 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 the uh, <laughs> Reverend used to take, when I was at St. James, he used to take me to the convention with him, you know, to show me around, show me the ropes. And uh, uh, Dr. Ross would call for Dr. Grant. Yes. And Reverend, Reverend Nix would be on the organ. Uh, uh, over in the women's division, she, he, she would call for him to come stop whatever he was doing, and uh, mm. uh, and it was it was I was trying to think of the name of the of the minister that would come to the convention. He did a lot of solo projects. He was mm. uh, I made a melodious voice outside of um, uh, Paul and uh, I'm trying to think of it. I uh, can't. Roberts, whatever his name. I, I, that's going back too far from me. Way far. I wasn't here yet, Bishop. <laughs> now, you said you was 100. Now, make up your I, mind. Well, I wasn't <laughs> in them days where you, I wasn't there. <laughs> Listen, those were the days, I mean, those were, and then just mm -hmm. around the city, uh, 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 when you all would sing, uh, y'all had that, what was the name of the group? The Daughters of Zion. That was the one of the of, Yeah. Yes. Yes, my sisters in law and uh, yeah, my yeah. best friend forever. I got to call their names Barbara Larkin, Teresa Mack, yeah, Carol Robinson. Now, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, Carol Reeves Robinson and Renee Veronica. We all were in that group together. And yeah. you talking about the our musician Edward Davey, who is now pastoring. He yeah. was our musician. Oh my gosh. That took us to a whole something different. We sang together, of course, right. in the gospel chorus and the inspirational choir. But when you are four voices, five voices, you just know it's the Lord at work. And mm -hmm. he really, he really worked with us. And our very first concert was in 1988. And we did uh, a CD. We call it a CD, but it was a cassette. <laughs> <laughs> a cassette, the Daughters of Zion, and it was such a blessing. And we were able to go to Bobby Jones Gospel. Oh my gosh. Right. Oh you know what that God. meant to us? Yeah. <laughs> to I, go I to a Bobby that. Jones Gospel. But yeah. the voices, the voices of that group, you, you just will never ever forget. And yeah. Edward Davey, who was our mu musician, wrote most of those songs. But yeah. again, we came from uh the Dorothy. Grant Days and under Emmett Moss. So we knew a lot of hymns. That was just our, we just appreciated that. So one of the songs on that cassette was Savior Lead Me Lest I Stray. And that wow. was one we always had to sing when we went out. So it was, it was such a blessing. And to see wow. those pictures and to see how we look back there, those real cute uniforms and oh my gosh, that was the Daughters of Zion how good the Lord is. And I'll say this too, our musician, along with uh, Reverend Edward Davey, was my son, Leroy Larkin, who was only eight years old. He was our drummer. <laughs> oh, and right. my brother-in-law, Rodney Larkin, was on the bass. And because Leroy was eight, of course, he got a little tired. <laughs> but now he's able to tour with other groups and He's, he's just been a blessing in his yeah. own right with the, the talent there. But that group, Daughters of Zion, Freedom Gospel Singers was even before that. Uh, Ronald Bennett formed that group and Joanne and 
Kay Wright and uh, Sharon Brown. We were all members of that group. So stages and yeah, it, yeah. it was all providence of God because it took me and took us to other levels and other ways of sharing our ministry with others all the time, giving glory to God and giving, giving our best. And I yeah. always tell my kids now uh, in the choir, the, the children's choir, practice makes permanent. Yeah. That was from one of my professors. You got to practice. How else do you think you're going to, you know, go to another level if you don't practice? So rehearsals, you know, being a part and being under uh, leadership, really good leadership kind of makes a big difference in, in our ministry. So I'm thanking God yeah. for freedom and, and daughters. Yeah, I remember Barbara. I mean, I had a chance to work yes, closely with yes. her when I was, um, uh, when we did that last Ford Auditorium concert. Oh, the, Donald uh, Bell. Donald Bell Corlears. Oh, yeah. And uh, I had picked out a song for her. So, Lord, I, I tell you, I was reminiscing over that. Oh, my um, God. Daryl Houston, Carol Cole, and Reverend Vales had came back home from D.C. And um, we have a tape. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have them uploaded. And oh, put please. It, put it on YouTube. Mm. Because on that tape, Renee Thomas is singing. Oh. David, David Ball. Uh, even Thomas Whitfield. Oh, my gosh. Is, is uh when we did the song, um, that's what friends are for. We did, we did a version of that. But anyway, back to you. <laughs> but I can't leave out First yeah. Fellowship okay. Missionary Baptist Church. Reverend R. D. Hill, Hill was the pastor. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you talking about a singing family? Oh yeah, Renee. Well, you know, Renee, Chosen, yes. Renee yes. and her mother, Kim. Yes. If it had not been for that opportunity. I might not have ever met Grene, Danny yeah. House, who now is the reverend, the pastor of First yeah. Fellowship, and the sweetest, I mean, the most courteous pastor, Reverend R.D. Hill. There's no way First Fellowship would have been yeah. where it was without the heart of a pastor, and he was definitely that. The music was out of sight. Cortex, oh, yeah. choirs, yeah. oh my gosh. First Fellowship, never will forget it. Never will forget. Yeah, those, those were some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. days. Because I, I remember when we started our group, our uh, children, we used to rehearse there sometime uh, at, uh, at, at, at the church. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I know what you're talking about. Oh, Matter okay. of fact, that's one of the first places that I heard Reverend Chapman at. That's where we first met him. That's exactly where when my I husband. Went, yeah, I went okay. to a revival there you go. that they were having, and Reverend Hill had uh, Pastor Chapman over uh, exactly. as the revivalist, and the Grenade and them invited me to come one night. Yes, and, and that was the the first time I had heard of him and really heard him uh, up close and personal, and met him. Oh my God! Way back, Never he probably. He probably don't remember. But I remember. <laughs> you had to bring that back to his remembrance. Yeah, and I remember. He being, also played yeah. basketball. Pastor Chapman yeah. is a basketball player. And my husband, of course, 6'4". They yeah. were on the same team with other pastors, the Sons of Thunder. It's what they call themselves <laughs> as, oh, as basketball no. players. It was a blessing. But that's, again, another opportunity. Who knew I would be a member of Galilee Baptist Church, 22 years now. Who knew? My husband yeah. knew. The Lord knew. Because East Side, I'm a West Sider. I was forever. <laughs> <I'm a West laughs> side. But there we go. East Side <clears throat> and wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing. Wouldn't yeah. Change a thing. Well, you know how I got there. It was my high school friend, Jerome Lewis. Oh, my called me and said, hey, we need us. That's how he said, us need a musician over here. I said, man, I'm I'm traveling and enjoying the trip. Oh my I'm going around the country. I'm I'm free now. And uh <laughs> because that year uh I had just I was burnt out after pastoring yeah. for 19 years. Oh my and, and then um 
was working with Charles Craig. And then that next month uh, in July, July 5th, I'll never forget it, uh, the Lord called him home because I was going to work with him and stay on the road doing, mm, my, mm, mm. doing my travels. But, but God, God had other plans. But, but God. God. There you and go. uh, uh, the wonderful opportunity afforded to me to, to work with you and oh. to work with Jerome and yes. Darnell. We yes. came at the same time. I mean, if there was ever, uh, I would look at that team as the next dream team I ever worked oh with. Oh my God. Musically, you yeah. know, uh, after after having and being spoiled at St. James all the years, <laughs> you know, I was like, "Hey, I ain't I ain't trying, <laughs> I ain't trying to do nothing less than that." Well, you, you know? put us to work. You put us to work, and that team worked from the yeah. children to the women to the yeah. mass choir. Oh my God, you put it us to work. Story. But again, it was another level for us to grow. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And Dr. Chapman saw it, and you said, okay, here I come. Yeah, you, did, yeah, we, um, you did the work. Yeah, but, you know, uh, I learned from Jimmy Dow and, and Reverend Nix, you know, uh, delegating and, and uh, mm -hmm. supporting, especially in a music ministry of a yeah. church of any size. You know, if it's going to... If it's going to reproduce or produce and grow, you got to have teamwork. You got to have teamwork. You know? and, teamwork. And you got, yeah, and the team got to be on their game, as the kids say. You got to be on it. <laughs> and uh, uh, you took care of those women and those oh. children. And uh, Donnell was liking those men. So, I mean, uh, it was yes. just an oversight for me, you know. But, you know, learning all of the music of everybody, Look, yes. yes, it was a challenge, uh -huh. and as well as for you. You had to learn the music for the children, direct, the, the yes. mass choir, learn the music, direct, sometimes sing and direct, <laughs> <laughs> sing yeah, background, but... sing lead and direct. Oh, you my know, God. But... had to play the piano <sighs> and direct and sing. And, sing. <laughs> and then, thank God, you know, Jerome, you know, oh, he wasn't yes. a number of complain and direct and get on and get us <laughs> and we don't right. follow that. You know, he was but, such a joy. Such you know, a yeah, joy to work it, it was, I mean, you look forward to coming to mm -hmm. rehearsal and working with a team uh, that that was, you know, really a team and cooperating. Oh, and, bless God. and I mean, it was, it was just wonderful. And then of course, we got, like you said, we got to travel together and enjoy yes. ourselves on the road, playing, car whatever and eating uh, eating and, we oh had yeah we eat had some. now we was going fellowship now you know we we put a new verse into what a fellowship what a joy did no not. that's right <laughs> Whenever Bishop, it was had, such love such love yeah, we miss yeah. you now we miss you now we yeah. do but we've got another good team i tell yeah, you yeah great team another good team or mine uh, yeah you know, or my ransom. On board before, yeah. I, before i moved and was helping Mount Zion. But I told Pastor, I said, listen, man, you know how long I've been doing this? I said, yeah, <laughs> I, am, I am on my way to semi-retirement. Oh, my. Oh you got my. to, you know, I tell people all the time, you got to know your season. You know, I I, I take joy now in in uh, teaching, even virtually sometime, and, mm -hmm. and uh, advising and coming in, helping whenever I can help. But uh, to take on a full-time, full-fledged minister music job uh, <laughs> is more than a notion. I'm well, ready our team to is enjoy the fruits of my labor. Yeah, well, we got a lot from you as team leader. Believe that. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. we grew. But the team that we have now is, is one that there's still growth opportunities. Dr. Rita yeah. Hardy yeah. is yeah. one of our musician team members. And you talking about knowing yeah. about the ministry itself, you've got to right. have her on. She, and I'm going to share yeah. with you her, her book, uh, The Standards, The Standards of um, Key Music Ministry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's valuable. You've yeah, got to have, have her on, valuable. We got to know why we do what we do. You know, yeah. and sometimes we have the label. Sure, I'm a director, but what am I bringing? Can I bring something that is 
godly, that is going to be able to serve and to open up for others to know God, to know Christ. Right, right. This, you got to have her on, Dr. Weed right. Harding. Oh, yeah. And I, you, I will, we will definitely right. get in touch with her and have her on. Now, now that's, her a good, that's a good segue, not only uh, into some other conversation I want to have about church music oh, and, uh, uh, and, and your book as well. Okay. Uh, but, but let me ask you this, because you, you, have, you have the best of the old school and the new school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you have kept yourself, I don't like the word, but I use it because everybody knows what it is. Uh -huh. but, but when I talk about church and music and church or sacred music, I, don't, I ain't crazy about being using the word relevant because to me that kind of dilutes the whole ministry purpose. I feel you. I feel of you. Music, because when you say I'm trying to be relevant, that's too wide of an open door. Right. And does the gospel change? No. And the see, gospel that, does not change. That's where I'm going. I mean, when you when you say Bishop, you need to stay relevant. I've had some young musicians. I said, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't think they know. I, I think I'm relevant <laughs> when I come to a service and somebody starts singing something and have to call me to wow. play and you sit there on the instrument. Wow. I think I'm very relevant <laughs> because they're going back to singing something that you should have learned if it's a hymn well, or whatever. You know, that's right. and 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 I, I think what we've done musically uh, as well as ministerially, uh -huh. we have we have allowed uh, some things to get in the church by trying to accommodate people, right. trying to be right. relevant. I mean, I've gone to musicals and stuff in the past, way before this pandemic, uh -huh. and, and they sound good, but I couldn't I couldn't hear them for looking at. <laughs> Decorum. Yeah. Decorum. We're going to talk about Uniform. Because, you know, they come, they want to sing Ricky Diller's song, but I say, but y'all got to look like Ricky Diller and New G2. Wow. They're always uniform. Yes, they are. Yes, On they the are. road, uniform. Uniform. At their concerts, uniform. And even when they, they wear uh, uh, what we call street clothes, a uh, slacks or uh, a shirt. Mm -hmm. The women wear a blouse and a skirt. The women are matching and the men are matching. It's still there. It's still it's, unit. It's a it's unit. It's still uniformity. You know, and I tell people all the time, now, if they got to have uniforms at Wendy's and McDonald's, and, you know, and they, <laughs> they had a fast food restaurant, why y'all fussing about uniforms at church? Exactly. And exactly. then I'm really hard on our musicians who wants to wear their baseball caps now in church and, and to wear their tore up jeans. And I'm like, when I was growing up, the wet tore up jeans was, was an embarrassment. <laughs> now they, <laughs> now they, buy, they buy them tore up. Yeah, they are $100 $200 now, Doc. For some tore oh, up jeans. jeans. For I, I don't get it. It puts a stake, it. it puts a stake in my heart. Yeah. Only because I know that God is not... God is not of that confusion. And if the eyes are on me versus on what we're singing and what is theologically straight, I mean, then we, we're missing the mark. So I think uniforms on choirs are very appropriate. Now, they would get me, even at Galilee, the, the robe, why we got to have the robe? Okay, but can we do something so that we'll look like that yeah. we're going in the same direction. Well, and you know, yeah, I mean, but the role, the role is to take away distractions because distractions. even, you know, I used to fuss, even when we say, well, how many times have I been you here? I said, Marlon, you got, <laughs> we tell them black and white, okay, you know, and Reverend would say, you know, okay, they can wear black and white, but Reverend, some people, they have on black and white, but it's all kinds of black and white. Yes, yes. We got to be more specific on <laughs> what we're talking about, about these skirts, blouses, or sweaters, or or what we, yeah. I mean, black and white is just, you know, got it, even got when it. we wore black and white back in the day, everybody had on the same kind of black and white. There you go. Uniform. You know, and it's it a is. uniform. 
right. take it off. Coming in on. with coming in with with rhinestones and coming in with <laughs> I mean yeah. just genuinely. I, I I'm with you on that, Doc. I just believe that it's a distraction. We want to be one. We want to. We want to be one, and yeah. uniforms are a part of that. Choir decorum, but a lot of it is not being taught, and I think that's a big issue. We need that's to teach. That's why. That's why I was so happy when when we put our heads together as a team, mm -hmm. and we did that workshop, that in house. Yes. Workshop. Yes. And, and a lot of churches don't do that. And I don't fault, you know, I stop fussing at musicians and choir members because they probably just don't know. Exactly. So it's no. our job to train and to teach them so that they will understand when we talk about the sacredness of the house of God mm -hmm. and what we can and cannot do. Right. And if they want to wear certain things, then come on, put your uniform in for these couple of hours. And when you leave church, <laughs> And you can take go put it on off. whatever you want to put on. And take it off. And you I know. think we we as leaders need to hear what our our membership is saying and allow for some some directives to uh, allow for them to have a part of the uniform or the, the unit that we're trying to build. A lot of times it can't just come from the leadership. If we're going to yeah. bring everybody in. We need, again, teamwork, and we need to talk to each other. A lot of times yeah. we don't do that. And communication, and that's one thing that really is in my heart. Let's talk about it, you know, yeah. and let's find out what the word of God has to say and go from there. It can't yeah. be all of what I think, uh, yeah. what I feel. Let's yeah. go on what God's word says. Well, well I'm going to tell, I tell people like they tell them at their job. Uh, even at Burger King, until you own your own Burger King, <laughs> then you can wear what you want. You can to wear. do what you do until you die for the church, or your blood yes, is sufficient Lord. enough to save your soul. Yes, See, the Lord. church is supposed to be a theocracy, not a democracy. It's God's way, no way, and it's supposed to be a sacred place. And yes. and I, it's just beyond me uh, what what some folk are doing uh, at the church now. I mean that that's a whole topic for a whole right. day yeah. and we gotta have let a me, workshop on it workshop yeah. on it we need workshop. let me <laughs> let me get this question in from from carla show oh she wants to know what is your favorite song and she also want to thank oh. you for singing at her mother's home going oh. uh, uh some time ago uh never grow old it never was a blessing old. she said it oh, was a blessing God. for her yeah. she has been a blessing in my life now that's my girl we don't have to talk every day we don't have to yeah. talk every month but carla is my girl carla marla i mean there is some similarity there yeah, marla, yeah. Carla. but uh i am to say a favorite i i have a lot of favorites hymns i really appreciate because they they are theology theologically sound yeah. and they they talk to you i yeah. need the every hour i do Gracious yeah. Lord, no tender voice like that. They talk to me. Um, Dorsey songs. Uh, yeah. I sang today, uh, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, you know, Dorsey songs. And one that is in my spirit a lot is, oh, today, what have I given? What have I given? What, what I've given today. How have I helped someone who needs to be shown the way? I mean, those songs really talk to you you know yeah. and i love i love the dillards i love uh hezekiah oh my gosh we sing some oh, hezekiah yeah. love, love them. yes and but the hymns talk they yeah. talk to us and they tell us more about our god they tell us more about our lord and savior so it, i heard you on one interview talk about you know the the 7-eleven the 7-eleven yeah. song yeah they they can reach you but is there a real message in there? That 7-Eleven song where you say, yeah. you, you sing seven words and you over and over. <laughs> but value you know, you know those songs, those songs, and, and we, I was talking with Bishop Freddie Washington Sunday, who's a recording artist and uh, 
played for Isaac Dubman's Reverend Cleveland and mm. one, of my, one of the workshop babies like I was. Wow. And, and we were talking about that, that simple fact that uh, uh, these songs don't have longevity. Nope. And the record industry have messed gospel music up so bad that every 90 days, every six months, you know, these artists keep trying to outdo themselves from the last time, uh -uh, uh -uh. you know, and, and, and the gospel does not have an expiration date. Not at all. So something so within, looking, something yeah, within. Oh my God. At, these songs are still, still good for today. Today. And we and, uh, need to hear them. And that's one thing we um, really stress or need to do more of stressing to our young people, the yeah. foundation you don't leave your foundation, no, you know, you learn you those hymns. And they used to crack up at me uh, teaching these things to the, the children's choir. We don't have to sing it like that, but those words are still yeah. valuable. And our young people need to know that these words and these songs last. You, yeah. you are, have always been one of my, my most, uh, uh, oh, I just love your writing, your songwriting. Uh, faith that conquers uh, your arrangement of something within. Oh my gosh, Bishop, your songs are, are so rich, so rich. And because of your ministry, I've been wanting to write a song. Oh my write goodness. Write. I'll write a song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Darnell, Reverend Minister Darnell and I came together and we did a song, uh, uh, it's a benediction kind of song. We still need to learn it. I've copywritten it because I've heard from you. Get your yeah. stuff copywritten. Get it. <laughs> Get it you, got, you got, you got folk, it. I learned from James Cleveland. You got folk like me. If I hear it, I got it. <laughs> you got <laughs> You sang it in front of me. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you well, play we, it in front of me and I love it, listen. We heard you. <laughs> I done recorded it. <laughs> and the next time you hear it, you be saying, oh, no, wait a minute. He, he sang it out. So yeah, I got it. Yes, he got it. And, and not a shame. But no. it's that ins inspiration that you and other songwriters, uh, Margaret DeRoe, yeah. uh, Eddie Robinson, and these are oh, people my who God. are, oh my gosh, that are at conventions. Eddie so Robinson. you go there and you learn these songs and you bring them back to your choir. Bring them I'm back to, to your, your ministry. I'm going to have to get him on call. When you brought, brought that song from the convention, I, I, I need to get to him and we, we did. I have so many reasons. Oh my gosh. To rejoice. And so to many rejoice. other of his songs, you know. Eddie like, Robinson, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. And a, being in his writer. class helped me writer. to do that, uh, the song, uh, Depart to Serve. And yeah. Minister Darnell and I got together and we put it together. And it, to me, that's what we are. We come to worship. Um, no we come to give God praise. But after that, we've got we a part to serve. to serve. So I gotta I gotta share that with you, Doc. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all do, <laughs> do it, do it. And like you said, sure. copyright it, record it, do yes. all of that, you know. Yes. Uh, because you know, we would, we would, uh, I grew up like that. I mean, we would we would have uh well, they don't do that now, but we would have <laughs> organ preludes. Uh, wow. Back as a child, my grandfather was a musician and uh, he would get on the organ and play prior to, to worship, yes. you know, uh, uh, to set the tone for old fashioned devotion. Got it. Got it. When the ministers and the deacons would come in for devotion and, and uh, the devotional leader would start out, but we already had music because people were coming in quiet and pray and meditate waiting mm -hmm. on the, the worship to call the worship to come. And yeah. as well, we never left the sanctuary without uh, the blessing of the benediction. By benediction. The and with a song that was Got it. always a benediction with a yeah. song. And you go out with that song on your heart, well, in your mind, and you're yes. listening to it. I mean, it's in you for a whole week and then you get back. There's yeah. something else. That's yeah. the glory of it. That's the, but it's leadership, Doc. It's leadership. Yeah. If if yeah. we don't know that that's appropriate, then we just do what we think we want to do. I, it's, I, it's I was, I'm so glad of, of that background and having those two yes. on us 
uh, because they they instilled that in us, you know, to uh, uh, espouse to excellence in music. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, you know, they say, oh, you, you do this. And I say, well, you know, not only do I have to glorify God, but uh, in man, I have, I have my own name and reputation to protect. You know, God gave me this gift and I got to use it. So if, if I'm gonna do something, I, I need to I need to commit to hone in on that's right 100 percent because it's going to speak of you and who you are and, and that's God people, that's God these musicians are lazy I, I can't I can't I can't excuse it and say no they are just lazy <laughs> well so many things have just gone over their head just yeah. because of the leadership. If yeah, we yeah. don't continue to teach, if we don't continue to hold the, the choir decorum workshops and the children's workshops, it will be lost. And again, yeah. if if the reverend or the pastor does not instill that, there we are. Well, you Foundations know, I, are I, I said something to my old colleagues in ministry. I said, you know what? I've been noticing y'all at some of these uh ordinations and licensing ah. of ministers i said now when i grew up there was three things that the preacher always received ah yes they they not only robed him that's but right they gave them a bible and a, what? And a hymn book a hymn book where yes, yes, y'all don't yes. even y'all don't even supply the <laughs> preacher because the preacher got to be the lead praiser yeah he's the worship leader he is, he's the he worship is. leader. He is she the or he, whoever is Pat, they're the worship leaders. We follow their lead. So That's many not. times we we want to do a different song. We might have rehearsed that song, but our leader has taken us in another direction as the Lord has given him utterance. So what? We need to know other songs that will meet yeah. up with that message. I used, to, I used to have late night conversations with Pastor Chapman. And he'd call me, man. He would ask me, what did, what was Charles Nick? What did y'all do over there to uh with that wow. team? I said, well, Reverend, you are a gifted and anointed fire baptized preacher, and you can sing. <laughs> yes. you, you, you're gonna have to. I don't, I don't care nothing about you going all over the country preaching. You better reserve some energy when you come to Galilee, you know, because Reverend did the same thing. He would uh -huh. travel everywhere, and sometimes he'd have me with him. But wow. I said, listen, you're going to have to merge that music with your message. Message. You're going to have to do it. And, and I was so glad. Oh, my. Listen, I'm telling you, it would take some time, Marla, when I was, was with Galilee, it would take all I had in me <laughs> to contain myself. I hear you, Doc. When Reverend would sing. Now, when I'm telling you, and I, I you. told him, I said, Reverend, you, I'm trying to tell you, man, you need to sing. You know, it will save you. Get in that mic and let the Lord use you and quit talking about, no, nah, I don't. You get yourself up there. And then sometimes, you know how we would do it, we would start playing one of his songs. And exactly. Look over there, rolling. I said, I'll care about you rolling your eyes. I'm the minister of music. Uh <laughs> Oh, boy. you are so right. Get and on to up, here, up man. a meter, a meter yeah. him. I mean, yes. people don't even do them anymore. So, are, are we ones to let that go? No, meter. James Emmett Moss at Spring Hill could not sing. Yeah. But he would strike up a meter. And yeah. Dr. Grant and the musicians, we knew where to go. That's because we were taught that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and with Dr. Uh, Dr. Chapman, pick it up. We got to learn this stuff. We cannot leave it happenstance. We yeah. have to learn it. And God has yeah. been good. Yes. And just just yeah. like the Never Alone Project, you know, yeah. I, 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 why is this, <laughs> when I got the guy, let's say, why is this CD sitting in boxes in the sound room? And ain't nobody promoting this. Listen, we had to order some more lately, though, Doc. All right. Because of virtual worship, people yeah. are asking for the CD. And it's Great. a blessing because 
he's singing on here. We nice. have, uh, oh, we have Daryl uh, Nichols, Nichols, who was yeah. our minister. Oh my gosh, playing yeah. on here. Brother Denard, his song is on here. Uh, yeah. Katrine, uh, Pat, Pat Johnson. Uh, Johnson, she's on here. It's a blessing. And the, fun, the, the many of the songs were arranged by Pastor Chapman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, Listen. You got to you got to do it. You got to do it. And the Never Alone he arranged. He arranged right. that song. Hymns of the church, we've got to get it out. And because of virtual, now many of us didn't want to go in that route. We didn't want to, but it has blessed us. It has because blessed. a membership has grown. Folk are sending emails and I mean from everywhere, doc, from everywhere. All over the world. And the, the world. message of the gospel is getting out. So. I get, I, I've gotten, uh, just yesterday I was on doing open mic, doing a Bible lesson, wow. I did the 10 o'clock thing. People from New Zealand, people from France. Everywhere. I mean, from everywhere, all over the United everywhere. States, chiming in and sharing. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. So how do you see, let, let's say post-pandemic, the yeah. church, the church music, the church choir, is the choir coming back or it's, what, what is it going to look like for, for music ministry in our churches? Yes, the choirs are coming back, Doc. Yeah. We are committed, committed to the gospel via the music to support our ministries. The congregation is wanting so choirs aren't going anywhere. We're we're going to, you know, have to still have the virtual because I think with our membership being as wide as it is now, you can't cut off the virtual yeah. worship. So I think some of the uh, programming might be a little different, you know, announcements and that kind of thing might be done or not done, <laughs> done yeah. in a different fashion. But you've got to still keep the gospel message and the message in song. Choirs yeah. do that. Yeah, Choirs yeah. are are not going anywhere. Yeah, not going and, anywhere. And, and 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 if you have to, like you've been doing, if you have to pre-record it to bring the full choir and spread them around, mm -hmm. set up the sound and the cameras and capture yeah. that and just edit it in. It this oh. stuff is wonderful. Listen, I'm sitting at home. You know, <laughs> it's not going anywhere now. Like yesterday, I had two therapy sessions, my therapist comes to the house, listen, wow. and then I can take my break, take my, my power nap in the afternoon, <laughs> eat my, eat my dinner. And then I get online. Oh, yes. And, and like today and do what I'm doing like right now and have wow. a ball and reaching people and everywhere. reaching others. So, and, and I mean, think it's about a our, Yeah. Think about our, our super senior citizens. We've yeah. gotten the, the virtual via uh, the internet, FaceTime, and we even now do a phone live stream. My yeah. mom, who 91, loves the choir, but she can't get out. She's able to at least hear the message, hear yeah. that sermon, hear those songs, hear the Our Power Sunday School lesson, you know, in a brief form, but you can't cut that out. So I, I don't know what's going to happen in a lot of our churches. We just got to invest. Yeah. Why not invest in excellence? We got yeah, to. It's, it's, it's the same thing with me and my mom. You know, uh, she'll come and, and then I got this. They got this device called Quick Smart. You know, I got a smart TV. Ah, and, okay. uh, yes. Put it on I, television. I put it on the TV, on the big screen. Yes. Where we can sit and enjoy Galilee. Yes. Anybody, you know, some Sunday mornings, I I church hop, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I go for, well, some of them started different oh my times. Eight o'clock. From nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. There you go. <laughs> one, one of my pastors, Pastor Hatcher, he don't come on till one. I so, see. you know, every hour I, I, I sneak in and sneak out and they don't even see me. <laughs> you know, I don't have to put up that Baptist finger. Thank God. Thank God. Quite a <laughs> you don't need that. No, you don't yeah. need that. But we're but, not but, going back to regular. I think our new normal is going to uh, impact the yeah. virtual and the sanctuary. You know, I heard a, a member say, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to come back or not. Well, don't make that judgment yet. 
no. because you just don't know. But we're not going to dismiss the idea of coming back into our sanctuary. Yeah. We're not. Nothing but can our, take our church live, no, yeah. nothing can take the place of a live service. Mm -mm, and, no. and I'm I'm looking forward just as soon as my doctor give me the green light. I'm <laughs> I'm they're gonna say, Lord, y'all, somebody call Eloise or something, or this <laughs> man. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna come in the door shouting. I hear you, Doc. Listen, <laughs> I hear you. The fact that Lord get me back up on these legs. Oh my and I can get back in church. Listen. Yes. I long yes. to enter his gates with thanksgiving. I hear you, Doc. Yes, courts. courts. Yes. Praise and it. Praise it. Just as <laughs> soon as I knock the door, I just go to Holland and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh and that, that that's oh, just the gosh. old church. But yes. uh I, I'm I'm excited. Now tell us what inspired you to write your book. Oh my gosh. Well, I did my master's at Wayne State, and you know, they have you decide where you want to go, what you want to, you know, emphasize. And yeah. I've always been in a choir rehearsal. I, I say in my book, 20,000 or more choir rehearsals I've been in. And <laughs> I want to tell others in my diary what I have learned and yeah. what influenced me the most and also what kind of turned me off. Leadership, it, it all starts with leadership. We have yeah. some ministers of music and some musicians who think this is mine. This is yeah. my choir. This is, you do it like I want to do it. And that turns a, a choir member off. And then you have, on the other hand, you have a, a, a leader who has the heart of shepherd. I'm here for you. What can I do to help you be better? And yeah. doing that in a choir room. A choir rehearsal is another classroom. And that's kind of how I, I took the book. The Diary of a Committed Choir Member. I don't care what happens. I'm still going to sing to the glory of God. You can talk about me. You can tell me to go join the usher board. You can tell me <laughs> that I shouldn't be here. But guess what? I am committed to trying to be better at what the Lord has given me. And sure, everybody is not a soloist. No. Everybody is not the strongest, <clears throat> excuse me, the strongest alto, tenor, or contralto. But look, when we come together as a unit, we can do excellent work in the Lord. So that's me. I talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, the shoes being thrown at you. Oh. I, I talk about all that. <laughs> but the commitment comes from you. You got to have in your heart what you want to do. So in my book, and it's available on Amazon and Essence Bookstore, get it, read it, and let me know what your feedback. Please give me your feedback because the only way that we're going to be better is to commit uh, ourselves to the work. And if I want to be a choir member, there's some things I got to learn. I've got to learn uh, why some of the scales. I've got to learn, you know, what key a song is in. If I want to be better, I want to do my best. I'm going to take some vocal classes. If that's what I need to get better, let's do it. Commit yourself to the work. Pastor's always saying, you know, give God excellence. That's what he requires. That, that's what he deserves to have from us. Excellence. And we've got to work at it. And leaders start it off. Leaders are the teachers. Yeah. So there we are. Classroom, choir rehearsal, they're all the same in my mind. Because I, I need to take something away that will help someone else be better. So it's not, it's an easy read. It's not long, 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 long. <laughs> so get it, <laughs> get it and let me know what you think. I'm open for feedback. I mean, you know, people say constructive criticism. Well, you started out criticizing me already. How yeah. about some feedback? Give me right. some feedback that will help me to grow. And sometimes that's good, bad, and ugly, but it's feedback. And when it comes to the work of the ministry, music ministry, we lay, we lay the time 
we lay it out for our pastors to come in and give us the word. So we have to be committed to the work. Committed right, to the work. Right. Oh, that's, God, that's, 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 that's real. Let me Thank see. Thank you, Bishop. Lena Brown is in there. And oh, my Lena. And Joyce Hughes and Linda, oh Linda Hunt. We got some people. Oh, what a in. I, I done missed some of them, but um, um, they talk about <laughs> Dr. Maddie Clark and Elma. Oh, Hitchcock. yes. What Brian I like about this platform, we can go back. We can go back yeah. and listen and, and find the nuggets that will really help us. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Bishop, you're doing a great work. I appreciate you. And uh, I told you, I said, I'm shaking in my sketchers. I mean, I what am I going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to talk need, about, Bishop? They don't need to shake it. <laughs> just like talking Thank on you. the phone, only we can see each other. <laughs> yeah. I, and, I remember, yeah. remember watching all those futuristic, scientific, sci-fi movies. Yes. Now we now we living in it's that It's actually day. happening. It's so happening. I used, to, I used to love the Jetsons and all that stuff <laughs> when right. they was talking on the screens and Flying yeah, in the sky. Right. Listen, we we we're there. And we're look at God. This. Look at God. Yeah. And we're using it to his glory. All of these techniques and all of these technical things that we've had to learn. Yeah. Yeah. They're there to his glory so that we can spread that mes message. Depart now, to serve. Tell us how you you balanced over oh. some 30 years at Blue Cross Blue Shield, your family. Yes. Church, rehearsals, conventions, all, <laughs> all of that in the last 30, 40 years. Oh, my God. You were able to be everywhere, being a wife, a mother, then a grandmother, uh, a, a teacher, and I mean, an analyst. I mean, just all of these different <laughs> titles and managing it, you know, during the day midday evening night weekends huh. all of that and uh, uh, uh but yet you did it you did to it. god be the glory i'm telling you and yeah. a very helpful husband for 37 yeah. years helpful husband i yeah. mean my kids never wanted for anything they had their music lessons and they went to school had their homework done and reverend larkin allowed he allowed me to, to do a lot that I to did. Go. Now, yeah. sure, I wanted to go to back-to-back -back conventions, sure. But I would pick one of those conventions, and that happened yeah. to be the Dorsey. Uh, trying to go to GMWA and trying to go to Dorsey, plus the, the, the work at Blue Cross, plus the, the work of, of men. You can't do it all, but you yeah. have to have help. You have to help. I had to have a very special, caring husband, Yeah, a very careful and caring mother-in-law. Yeah, <laughs> Doris Larkin, I, I bless her heart. She went to pick my kids up sometime when I had to work late or there was a choir rehearsal. And I need to thank my children because yeah. I went to 20,000 rehearsals. Many of those rehearsals they were at too. Yeah, you had so, to take them with you. I, they were with me. You know, they had I, to come with me. But I just I thank God for help and teamwork. Yeah. You had to have teamwork. And yeah. being in the kind of job that I had, sure, I had some flexibility. And I don't want my uh, old bosses to be listening because I'd run <laughs> out to a Bible class so I could sing, <laughs> you know, intro. And then I'd oh. ride back. And I have to thank police officers who I know I would speak. They stopped me. But they didn't give me a ticket. It was the glory of God. I told them, you know what? I had to get to this meeting. I had to get to this funeral. <laughs> yeah. Not, you know, you thank people for being in your way. That was yeah. real. That's the only way. And right. now my husband's deceased. My kids are grown, 40 and 42. My grandkids, they follow me sometimes to rehearsals and to the mm -hmm. conventions. But it's the Lord's doing. It's all yeah, the Lord's yeah. couldn't couldn't have done it by myself. No that's, way. Such a blessing. And, and, and such a model. Such a model for well, all for glory to God. All yeah. glory to God. Because during some of that time I was sick. Mm. You know, I, you had people who would take over the rehearsals for you, you know, be there for you. 
you know, at, on the job. And my mother, I tell you, without her, oh yeah, it would have been a wash. Just a mother's wash. in the house. Mother, <laughs> it listen, mother <laughs> in the house. She is Ooh, that. So all glory to God, because no way I could have done it by myself. You yeah, know, and now yeah. I'm looking back at old pictures and looking at you know some yeah. of the CDs. I'm like, dang, how did we do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only God, only God. Such, such, a, such a blessing. And and and, and uh, uh, your role with the uh, national uh, convention of yes, national yes. gospel choirs and courses. Yes. You know how did that come about? You you were over the soloist bureau for some years for 15 years again that was another uh opportunity that god set on dr grant's heart yeah to even get us it at the conventions and i was uh, able to sing prior to some of the services and when the willie may ford smith who was the the founder of the soloist bureau uh she heard what I was doing, Dr. Grant, of course, put a word in, and yeah. I was able to support the Soloist Bureau for 15 years. Now, I had to relinquish that because of health issues and just seeing I couldn't do it all. But God placed even there another minstrel, uh, Minister Rodney Whitley, to come after and take the Soloist Bureau even to, to greater greater greats you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. so because of our love of the gospel first of all and our love of doing god's work the doors open i can couldn't believe it myself margaret Duro, and you know my sister is mm. the writer of all writers give me a clean yeah. heart oh my gosh so many songs she asked me to sing one of her songs no right and at a convention and what a blessing you know, and from that, you have people like Leonard Burks, uh, yes, every day yes. is a day of Thanksgiving, who have you sing some of their songs. Now, yeah. I'm thankful that even now I can change the key and I have to ask the doctor, <laughs> put yeah. me in another key, <laughs> but still able to serve in that regard. So mm -hmm. it's only it's only the blessings that the Lord gives and he gives those through other leadership, other other people. Yeah, I was thinking the other day, not long because I got some buddies in Toledo area, ah. uh, and when when Pastor Roberts passed oh, at Indiana Derek. Baptist, it made yeah. me reflect on my friend Derek Roberts. Yeah, uh, I mean just just a wonderful man, just wonderful a, man, director of director. director. Yeah. That man. I learned a lot from Derek too. Yeah, I mean, he was yeah. the chairman of the board for many years of yeah. the national convention and right. just his way with people and he was right. just, people right. say people person. Yeah, that was, that was Derek and yeah. musical. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Piano could teach a yeah. song. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Yeah. He just, he just beauty. We still miss him. I talked to Brian and him yes. all the time. Yes. We still miss, miss Derek and the Detroit Toledo connection. Oh my. We would go there and they would come here with that uh, interfaith choir. Oh my the choir voice. Of Toledo. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, such such a such a wonderful time. And yeah. and Donald Vales, the late Donald Vales and myself had an opportunity to record them. Wow. On SOG along with Rance Allen. Oh my some years, some years ago. You know, Donald Bell presented them in in a uh, project. Yes, I yes. mean, I mean, we got, we got, we all got some miles on us. And some I'm women. telling you, and I cannot, and I would be remiss if I didn't mm -hmm. mention uh, Martha Pye. Now she was out of First oh, Coast yes. Baptist Church. Oh my gosh, that was an opportunity for me to write and do more of the uh, the uh, communication pieces because of her magazine. My right, husband and right. I worked with Martha Pye with the Christian Guide magazine. That was yes, the, like I a remember. jet, like a jet magazine. Yeah. Featuring folk in the ministry, uh, pastors, roving reporter kind of things. I mean, people, they enjoyed that. And then it was the pictures. 
And yeah. Reverend Larkin took picture on picture on picture. He would take so many pictures that people were just so excited to see themselves in print. But it was because mm -hmm. of Martha and our association with Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. It, it just built. It just built. Yeah, yeah. So I, I could not even think about doing what I did, you know, with a book and public speaking and all that without missing yeah. Martha. Because she was the impetus for that as well. God yeah. works. He works through people. He works through his team. He works. He oh, just yeah. works. So glory yeah. to God. And I'm thinking, look, I don't have much to talk about, Bishop. A, a whole well. hour. An hour. And it's 10 15 <laughs> already. Oh, my God. <laughs> you did. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what you was worried about. I was, I was shaking in my sketchers, I'm telling you. Uh, 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 but look uh, how good God is. He is just good. Yeah, Carla bringing up old memories of Messiah, oh. Dr. John Reese. Oh, Reese. And the song, going to have a good time. This is the day the Lord had me. Going back, doing a whole lot of things. I uh, know that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So, uh, but listen, you, you've you been so gracious and so kind. You've given us... Oh. A lot of information. Again, it's in the comment section. Get her book, oh, Diary yes, of please. a Committed Choir Member. And uh, it's on Amazon. <laughs> you can get it. And uh, listen, I want you, before we leave, to just take a minute and encourage uh, ministers of music, directors, yes. directors, and uh, soloists. Uh, yeah. they, they all need a encouragement. I think a lot of people in this day and time, uh, we just lost two giants. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh in my our God. city, Dr. Dorgan Needham and uh, now Professor Kenneth Minor. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, one of them, or both of them were, were mentors of mine. My grandfather yes. took me to Kenneth Minor when I was, I think about 15 or 16 <laughs> years old. He was my first piano teacher. Yeah. My yes. first. And he would encourage me. Now, like, I'm a hundred, Doc. I'm a hundred. So, okay, now I have a little more time. Yeah. <laughs> he would say, all right, watch out now. When I got my finger in right and all that, he was such a blessing. I mean, oh, and yeah. for folk to know or have had any, any inspiration from him, it, it went yeah. a long way. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, but encouraging, sure. encouraging. And I think that as, as, leaders and we call ourselves that we have to be honest be yeah. honest with people and honest with your ministry you cannot give god anything you no. have got to be at your best and practice makes permanent you have to practice yes uh, to hone your skill to i mean singing uh directing you know writing you've got to hone that skill and ask God to give you, Lord, you, you said I could do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it. Help me to be the best that I can be. Musicians, we, look, I don't call myself a musician quite yet. I do know many of the scales, but yeah. I'm not there yet. You've been playing some of, some of our musicians forever, but guess what? It's still so much more so that much to you learn. can learn so much yeah. more and we have to be really a witness so that our young people that's my heart when a young person says you know miss larkin how can i do well let me help you we've got to help each other and we've got to say you can do it in jesus you name can you it. can do it you, you can, can do, do it. it so that would be a closing word be the best at what you do for mm. the lord and hone that skill. Be, be anxious to go and learn more. You know, ask questions. Now, I know Bishop Woods is a prolific writer, but Bishop, how is this, how is this lyric? How can I make that better? Ask mm -hmm. the questions. And if you don't know, say you don't know and find out. Yeah. There's a way to find out. Somebody's there that can help you find out. And we have to be uh, the worship leaders. We're not the we're not the main thing, 
We need to support our congregations. There's some, I mean, that's that's the choir, the congregation. Help mm -hmm. us to help and, and minister to the congregations. So, and knowing why we sing, the reasons why we sing. It's not about us. It's about us ministering and giving God glory yeah. and giving others the gospel. The right, gospel is right. song. So oh, choirs wow. will still be around. Sure, the voices, and I don't say praise teams. I say, okay, here's the voices. This is just the voices, because the yeah. choirs will be back. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I, I know that's right. I got, I, got, I, I got a couple of songs in the can that's for choir. Okay. I got some, some stuff we want to do. I was talking to a couple of, talking to Denard and yes. talking to uh, Rudolph Stanfield. And oh my. Uh, this pandemic, uh, all of the songwriters have been, been in their closets. There you go. <laughs> Letting the Lord Time inspire. Uh, with some new melodies from heaven. Exactly. So we're, look, we're looking forward to the end of this year. Some of them are doing new releases now, you know. I see. Uh, mm -hmm. Larry Callahan and uh, uh, some of the solo artists are coming out with their projects. Uh, it's such a blessing, and we're hearing new music. Uh, exactly. Ricky Diller is getting ready to do something else again. Wow. You know, the, the, one of their latest, he and B.B. Winans, uh, oh, so wow. it's a lot going on and we praise God for that. Yes, we but do. Marla, let me, let me thank you and Fish, appreciate uh, thank you, you for taking the time to share with us tonight oh. and, um, listen to all of our friends. If you've enjoyed this, jump in the comment section right quick and let us know how much you appreciate Marla Larkin for all she done her, her <laughs> personal contribution. God the, the is gospel good. Music. And uh, we claim her as a Detroit jewel. I'm there. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Bishop. So uh, y'all let us know. Send us some thumbs up and some hearts before we leave. Let us know you've been blessed. And then we encourage all of you at your leisure, go to any of our pages. Go to all of them and <laughs> just subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Go to YouTube, Fellowship of Music and Arts subscribe there are other content on there the very first program we did on this is my story on bishop andreas woods page wow. uh, we did it with vanessa bell armstrong uh go to that page subscribe awesome it's denominational similar churches subscribe tomorrow wow. 5 p.m we will be live uh talking from the subject let's go back to god mm. uh, bishop eric mitchell Bishop Gregory Simmons, Bishop uh, Jeffrey Hatcher, and myself. Wow. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3, Malachi 3, verse 7. The subject, we're going to team teach on the subject back. Okay. Let's go back to God. Don't wow. miss this. It's going to be a blessing. I know it's 9 11, starting already <laughs> early in the morning, all over the world. They're going to be broadcasting, doing memorial about the yes. Twin Towers. But yes. listen, we're going to be doing a 9-11 too. It's an emergency. <laughs> Dial 9-11, 5 p.m. Join us on the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA page. And uh, we're going to look in the word of God to see why we need to go back to God, all right? Marla, yes, we love you. We're going God to pray and we'll be gone. Father, we thank you now thank you. for this thank privilege you. of fellowship. We thank, thank you, you for the woman thank of God. You. We thank you for her gifts, her talents, and the anointing that's on her life. We pray now that you'll continue to supply all of her needs. Bless her thank you, Jesus. physically, mentally, spiritually, thank emotionally, you. financially, whatever she needs, God. And we pray, God, that her latter will be greater than the former. Bless continue the to bless her, go before her, and make easy thank and successful Lord. her way. And then, God, we pray the prayer of Psalms 90, Thank 17, you, and that the beauty of the Lord our God be upon her and establish the work of her hands. Thank you. And the work of her hands established thou with. Now, God, we believe Jesus. you. Touch you for anything that she desires and Thank that you. she will be blessed. Thank bless you. her mother and bless oh, her yes. entire family, God, you, and continue to uh, give her fresh anointing for ministry. Jesus. As she continues to sing your praises, that men, women, boys, and girls may come to know 
that you love them and you say mm. in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name amen and thank amen. God amen love the you blessings to all of you I thank command you. the blessings of the Lord to take all of you to next time Marla amen. love you and love we you will back. talk we'll talk God soon. bless you blessings. thank you <laughs> love you back <laughs>